Okay, welcome to our lecture today where we will be talking about um, O2 saturation on the venous side. We all know how to get an ABG, arterial blood gas, where we're looking for the O2 content in the artery. But what information will a venous blood gas help us? Venous blood gas or what we call a VBG. So, how, first of all, how do we get this VBG? Basically, if a patient has a central venous line, so we're talking about an internal jugular IJ central venous line, you can get a sample from there, and that will kind of get you the blood that is found in the right atrium, which probably corresponds to the right ventricle, and which probably corresponds to the venous sign. Usually, usually the O2 saturation in the venous side is more than 70%. If we go back to our physiology class, and um, whenever the blood is carrying oxygen, let's say that you leave the heart with 100% oxygen, and with one cycle, probably you will lose about 25 to 30% of your oxygen content. And that's why once, uh, once, let's say, the blood goes and finishes a whole cycle, if you measure the oxygen content on the venous side, you should have about 70 or above than 70 uh, percent. Now, in certain diseases which we will talk about, you can measure the central venous oxygenation and this can tell you what's going on. Namely, we're talking about cardiogenic shock. So let's go back. In cardiogenic shock, the heart cannot pump well. There will be low blood pressure. And so the heart takes longer time in this process. So let's say that um, if you follow a drop of blood over here, it usually takes a minute to go around and reach the other side. Maybe in cardiogenic shock, this drop of blood will take, let's say, four times. So, this drop of blood will be exposed to tissues for a longer time. And those tissues are hungry for oxygen. And thus, they will take more oxygen. And by the time that drop of blood goes back, that drop will have a venous O2 saturation of less than 70%. And this is the physiology behind using the venous O2 sat to tell you that this patient has more of a cardiogenic component than a septic component. In a septic component, the, patient, uh, the patient's body has to compensate for the sickness and you'll find that the heart goes fast and pumps stronger. So, a drop of blood over here might not even have the chance to empty all its oxygen and the cycle might even take less time. And thus, in, in septic shock, you will see that the venous O2 sat is going to be more than 70%. And this is the major difference between cardiogenic and septic shock when you're looking at the O2 venous saturations. Make sure that the sample is taking through the central line, okay, central, through the internal jugular.